Thank you much. So, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, I've got you for 20 minutes um, and then it's coffee break. But before I start, what I want to do is just to gauge uh, the level of knowledge in the audience. So, hands up who have used H2O. Who's used H2O for a year? Two years? Five years? Ten years? Okay, so what about SAS? <laughs> what about SAS? Who's used SAS before? For a year? Two years? Five years? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Hey, <laughs> so basically, 20 years I was working at SAS. So 20 years I've been using SAS. Nobody's perfect. Pardon? Nobody's perfect. Exactly. <laughs> 20 years, 1,000 weeks, 7,000 days. That was a pretty long time. So I've come across the H2O because I can really sense a community and a community that's growing. I think. Just looking at the number of people that have been at this conference over the last two days is testament to that. And really what I want to talk about is sort of the key reasons that I feel that H2O is a growing presence and is growing within EMEA. So, so just to be aware, some of my slides will get a little bit weird. So first of all, if I think about data science now compared to where data science was 20 years ago, I actually feel sorry for the marketplace. I feel sorry for customers that are needing to use machine learning and data science to feed applications because it's a massive maze of technology and process that organizations need to go through. So if you think about all of the different technologies that are used in the data science space, whether it be data science platforms, cloud platforms, orchestration engines, decision engines, you need some sort of way to glue all of that together. And what I want to do within H2O is really allow our customers to navigate through that maze. Because primarily what we really need to do is, is you as a data scientist or you as a business user, you come up with an idea. And all that really matters is that you can quickly move through that maze as quickly as possible to get an accurate decision for whatever application that you're building. So for me is how do we navigate through that maze and make it simple for our customers that we're serving, whether it be internally um, or externally, to navigate through that. And I want to make it as easy as ABC. So some of you may remember uh, the Jackson 5, they created a, a single called It's Easy as 1, 2, 3, ABC. And I want to make it as easy as you take data, you throw it into something and out pops something that you can then deploy like that. So I call this the ABC of machine learning. So we need to quickly acquire data. We need to quickly build a model and we quickly need to consume that model. And I suppose you could put a D in there because we want to make better decisions. So I've come to, this is where the, so I've come to H2O because I really believe that it is the platform that enables us to make better decisions faster. Because that's really what we want to do. And I was thinking about what have I learned within the last two months of being at H2O. So you've got to remember, I've come from a completely closed source vendor where getting hold of SaaS was really, really hard because you had to go and see people at SaaS, which is completely different from what we're doing at H2O. You've got a platform that you don't have to go to a H2O employee and say, please, can I have a license file? What you can do is download um, H2O, play with it in your own environments, into a Spark environment, so what do I see is the real key benefits. And at the moment, I'm seeing that there's five. And these really are making us make our customers make better decisions faster. So I see it as installation, shallow learning curve, continuous improvement, deployment, and automation. So what I want to do is just take each of those in turn. But this is where you're going to see if I, you can link those points to the slides that I'm going to put on. So the first one, what do you think that one is? <laughs> of those five points, any ideas? Installation. Yeah, so let me talk about installation first of all. So 
When I came to H2O, the first thing that I wanted to do was play with the software. I wanted to see, well, how easy is it for a customer to download the open source packages or install driverless AI? Either driverless AI sitting on my laptop, my Windows laptop, or spin up an instance within a cloud environment, uh, AWS, Microsoft Azure, or GCP. I couldn't believe how easy it was to get something working. So yes, I'm a little bit technical, but I had no experience in um, installing within the cloud environment. It took me five minutes to get driverless AI working within Amazon uh, environment, and probably four of those minutes was working out who do I have to speak to to get a license key for uh, Amazon to work out who was going to pay for that particular instance. So this is the get where I so about making better decisions faster. With H2O, we can get something up and running quickly. You can start to work on building those machine learning models. What do you think that one is? You've got to think a bit out there. Any ideas? What is that? It's actually a curb. So my mother-in-law always talked about a steep learning curb. It wasn't a learning curb, it's a learning curve. <laughs> so this is a shallow learning curb, so to speak. So again, I've had no experience. Yeah, my jokes are bad. <laughs> um, I've had no experience at H2O. I've had no experience in driverless AI. Yes, I've got 20 years worth of building models from data science, uh, but from a SaaS background. I'm able to now build models incredibly quickly, whether that's in a graphical user interface, or whether it's writing code, or whether it's using Flow to call the H2O libraries. So this is, again, a massive benefit of the H2O platform. We've got a very shallow learning curve. You can get to value incredibly quickly. So, what's this one? So you've only got three left. So we've had learning curve. An enemy. Pardon? An enemy. Is, is I, it an enemy? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so this is what I say is continuous improvement. So Lewis Hamilton, world champion again. But if you looked at his car at the start of the season, it was probably completely different to how he finished that season. Yes, he's having to work within the same rules and regulations, but he and his team are constantly refining that particular product to go faster and faster and faster. And they've been the best team over the year at continuously improving the product. I have never worked for a company that continuously improves the product as quickly as H2O. Driverless AI has had a huge number of iterations and improvements over the seven or eight months that's been available. Look at the update releases that we have for sparkling water and H2O3. By using the H2O platform and driverless AI really allows you to benefit quickly from all of that um, knowledge that we've got back in Mountain View to improve that product. So you can then quickly improve your product that you're developing for your internal stakeholders as well as your customers as well, enabling you to make better decisions faster. So this actually goes to automation. So if we think about the data science community, there's not enough of us, and there will never be enough of us, no matter how good our education program is, because our customers will want more models faster, more granular models faster. So we need to think about how do we automate more of our work, not because we want to make ourselves out of a job, but so we can now go and solve more interesting problems. So can we put automation around solving structured data problems that allows us to go and solve those with unstructured data, whether it be textual data or image data or video data or sound data. And again, what I'm seeing at H2O is this drive for automation to help us fill that talent gap. And then finally, and this is the most important piece, deployment. 
machine learning is a complete and utter waste of time unless you can do something with your output. The value to organisations is where the rubber hits the road. We need to think about how can we take whatever we're producing and quickly get it into production. We haven't got time to spend on weeks and months of recoding our models. We need to create things that we can just chuck over the fence to an IT team that they can quickly deploy. So this concept of a mojo that many of you may have heard of is incredibly powerful because this is now the object that whether you want to deploy your application in the cloud, I don't really care if it's Azure, Google, um, the other one, Amazon, <laughs> or other AN other cloud provider, you now have an object that is now agnostic. And you don't need to have a H2O framework around that because it runs within Java. And you've got something, IT would go, yep, yeah, I get what this Java object is. I just throw stuff in and out comes something which I then do something with. So again, this is the key bit. It's where the rubber hits the road, where organizations gain the value from machine learning. So really, what are my closing thoughts? Well, my closing thoughts, first of all, is a data scientist is never happy. Never, never happy. But I say that in a really, really positive way. Because a data scientist, traditionally, is always constrained by something. They're either constrained by the amount of data that they've got. They're either constrained by their compute that they've got. Or they're constrained by the fact that they're having to do data prep rather than building models. Or they're constrained because they built a model and now they've got to take that model and deploy it into a production system. And what H2O is really about is, well, how do we remove those constraints as quickly as possible? How can we quickly get more and more data into our data science platform to allow us to create better and better models? How do we remove that compute of, well, we've got to create some features and we've got to create um, the machine learning model. And then we've got to take that machine learning model and then deploy it. So the key with H H2O is we're rem trying to remove all of those bottlenecks. And what I want to do over the next few months and few years with our customers in the European region is really go on a journey with you to help you grow um, as da a data science community and also help you grow how do you take data and gain value from it as quickly as possible because that will really help you and your organizations make better decisions faster. Okay? So um, if anyone's got any questions at all, then I'm happy to take them now. Thank you, John. Any questions, anybody? How does H2O work with SaaS? How does H2O work with SaaS? So that's, that's a really good um, question. So I think if we look at what SaaS does, SaaS, SaaS goes from end to end in terms of it can take data really from any different data source, massage that data together, build a model, and then maybe deploy that model uh, somewhere. But where H2O really gets the value on top of what SaaS does is the speed at which we can build models and the speed at which we can then deploy those models. So what I see SaaS being really good at, potentially, if you've already got a SaaS footprint in, in play and you, you're using SaaS data step and data processing to get your data into an analytical data mart, then SaaS would do that workload really, really well then as soon as you've got your data in your analytical mark structure, so one row per customer, one row per ca transaction, and your features, you, we can then take that model, uh, take that mark, and run that through the H2O environment. I'm working with uh, customers at the moment that rather than having SaaS to do that heavy lifting and heavy merging of data, they've gone and used a Spark platform to then do that and replicate that particular framework. Um, so, so SAS I see is very good on that 
getting the data fit for analytics. They've also got some model management capability um, within there as well. And again, H2O models could be imported into their model management um, framework as well. Any more questions? Thank you, John. Okay.